Today we're going to make a throat plate for the use of dado blades and a table saw. You cannot use your existing throat plate with the dado blades because the opening just is not wide enough. So you have to make a custom throat plate or buy one to use dado blades in your table saw. In this video I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. You can save yourself some money and it will give you a handy little project to do. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Durdorf and this is Detroit DIY. Let's get this started. Before we get going, I want to thank everybody for the sales on the shirts and the hats. It's amazing what you guys have been doing. I really appreciate it. It helps the channel. It helps the small percentage I get from each sale helps to grow the channel, helps me to do projects and videos that I want to do and that I want to bring to you that wouldn't necessarily pertain to daily life. And thank you. The material I'm going to be using is Luan. This is 3 16 This was a 2 foot by 2 foot sheet. I've already cut one throat plate out of it. We made a zero clearance throat plate last week. Hopefully you've seen that video. I'm going to put a link to it at the end. I also have some table saw tutorials and other table saw videos that if you're new to a table saw or even if you've been using a table saw for a long time, maybe you've become complacent and it wouldn't hurt you to watch some of these videos. I became complacent and almost lost the end of my finger. That is also in there, what happened and, and how everything went south on that bad day. So this is 3 16 Luan and I've cut it in half and glued it together. This sheet of Luan was $9 and some change at Home Depot. You can find it in the section where the cut sheets of plywood are, the 4x4 or 4x2 sheets of plywood, all the cut material that you can buy and it's enough to make three throat plates for my saw. The first thing I'm going to do is run this through my table saw and just get it cut off square to this edge that I've already cut so I have a square piece to work with. So we're going to set the blade I believe at one and eight and one eight. Yep. Eight and one eighth. All right, let's get this thing fired up and cut off. Now what I want to do is cut this into strips the width of my existing throat plate which is 3 and 11 sixteenths of an inch. I want to be fairly precise here because I want it to fit snug. So if I leave a little extra, then I'm okay with that. I don't want to leave a sixteenth extra, but a little bit wouldn't bother me. I'll sand it off relatively easy and get that snug fit that I want. I am happy with that. Okay, with these cut to the appropriate width, we're going to go ahead and pop this out here. We're finished with this throat plate and we're going to talk about how I determine the thickness of my material and why I chose this material. You can use any material that you want 
th as close to the thicknesses that you need and I'll show you how to determine that. My existing throat plate has set screws in the throat plate itself four of them and there is one set screw in the table saw right here and these are adjustable to make sure that the throat plate is flush with the top of the table saw when you're making a custom throat plate you need to figure out the depth that the throat plate needs to be so my table saw has these lands right here with nothing obstructing them and this is what I want to go to I have one set screw right here that we will just notch the throat plate out around so I'm going to use my combination square and I'm going to come in here right down to that land and get my measurement which is three-eighths of an inch so with these two three-sixteenths pieces of material glued together I have exactly three-eighths of an inch so it sits in there very nice for me and I might have to sand it a little bit we'll see sometimes it sticks up just a tick doesn't set in there quite perfect but we'll see and if so then we'll just sand it a little bit so when you're doing this for your saw you want to check that and see if your set screws are in the saw table itself you could potentially use half the thickness of this or just a 3 16 piece and then adjust your set screws to get it all nice and flush with my table saw unplugged I'm going to go ahead and raise this blade up all the way and get it out of here when you're using the dado blades you do not use your riding knife so we're going to get that out of the way at the end of this video I'll put a link to my table saw tutorials and in there we'll discuss setting up dado blades sacrificial fences push blocks push sticks all kinds of stuff that you can make yourself feather boards to keep your table saw safe and to keep you safe also in that tutorial is the setup of the data blades that we're going to be using so I'm going to set these this one feather board I'm just going to make a blank and the feather board that we're going to make now is going to be for a 3 8 dado stack this used to be my 3 8 throat plate for my dado blades but then I needed a wider stack so I turned it into a wider throat plate and it's not that I can't use it with a 3 8 but when I do dados I kind of like them clean I don't want a bunch of tear out so I'd really like it to be a zero clearance type throat plate for each set of dado blades With that blade off, I'm going to go ahead and get me a 3-8 stack set up in here and get them tightened down.
with them tightened in here I just want to go ahead and check the measurement on them and make sure that we are where we want to be and that looks really close I'm happy with that so that's what we're going to run with with the dado blades in here we have to leave our riving knife lock in the unlocked position otherwise it will come in contact with the blades and destroy it and you'll never raise the saw blades this high when you're cutting a dado anyway typically a dado is maybe three eighths of an inch or a half inch or maybe even three quarters depending on what you're cutting a dado in but this will never contact the bottom of the throat plate because you'll never raise the blade that high Now what we want to do is take our existing throat plate, set it on here, line it up really nice, and trace these curves onto our new piece of wood. And then we're going to cut them out with the jigsaw. And because we're tracing this, I want to actually cut it on the line, not outside of the line, but on the line. That should give me really close to the size I need. I'm going to be using a scrolling blade in my jigsaw. It's a nice thin blade that'll let me cut these curves. They're not that sharp a curve, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal no matter which blade you use. I just wanted to take my time, be a little meticulous, and hopefully not have a ton of sanding to do to get it to fit. So I'm going to get this other one cut out, set it to the side, and we'll come back to this one. With it completely cut out, it is just slightly too long. The edges here are just a little bit too abrupt. So I have some 60 grit sandpaper. And I just want to knock that down. This will make short work of it. And get this thing fitting in there just the way I would like it to. nothing that holds this in here when it's all finished so I want it to be a snug fit but I don't want it to be so tight that I have to pry it out so I want to take my time test fit it and get it in there nice and snug what I like to do is set one end in and then just take a good look at the other one and see where material needs to be removed I can see that we're just bumping a little bit through here and we're looking pretty good over here but we're a little bit snug so the whole thing just needs a little bit but a little bit more right here. At this point in time I have it fitting pretty good 
Now I need to cut a notch out of it for this set screw that's right here, but I don't want to remove it and then I'll have to readjust it when I put my other throat plate in. It's just as easy for me to just cut a notch in this throat plate and leave that one alone. So I'm just going to mark it right here with a little line. Take my jigsaw and just cut me a little semicircle right out of there. Still just a little bit snug, so I just want to This is the process where patience pays and you will get a really nice fitting throat plate so it is sitting in here and it is not too terrible to remove so with it sitting in I just kind of want to give it a feel and it, it's a little abrupt right here meaning that if I'm sliding a piece in it may hang up on it because it's, it's poking up just a little bit it's poking up a little bit down the sides but it is sitting in there nice so what I'm going to do is just take my DA sander and I am going to go over this just a little bit and get it to flush out better than what it is here it's really good here it's not this side it's not this side is really good so I'm just going to give it a little sanding I have some 220 grit on my random orbital sander here and I'm just going to give this whole thing a little clean up. On the back side I just wanted to clean any burrs off where from me sanding it with that other sandpaper. I'm pretty happy with that. We are flush. You'll, you'll see the material won't be hanging up on it. It slides right over. Now there's a little catch right here. I'm going to sand this area just a little bit more. important that you get it flush so that you don't have any any hang-ups when you're trying to feed your material through and I like that so now with everything fitting nicely I'm going to bring my fence right over the top of this and lock it down right there so that the fence will hold this side in place I'm going to use my push stick and I'm going to hold it down right here I'm going to turn on my table saw and I'm going to raise the dado blade up through this. I'm going to raise it up to the height of about one inch.
Now with my combination square, I'm just going to check my height real quick and go from there. See what if we need to raise it up some more or no. We need to come up a little bit more. I am really happy with that. Now we'll just pull these little pieces off that are left over. And there we have it, our custom throat plate for our 3H dado stack. It is my recommendation that you make individual throat plates for different thickness dado stacks depending on what you're doing. So this is pretty much a zero clearance throat plate for this 3-8 stack and it'll give me a nice clean dado without any rip out. Let's run something through here and take a look. I have a scrap piece of one material here that I'm just going to run about halfway through it. I'm just going to guesstimate somewhere about right there. Bring our fence over something like that so as you can see our dado is very clean there is no tear out it's very clean cut and that throat plate helped us achieve that nice clean dado. There we have it guys. Every table saw is a little bit different. So yours might not be exactly the same as mine and your procedures may be slightly different. But the idea behind it is exactly the same. Remember to take your time when you're fitting the throat plate because it does just sit there. I've never had one try to bump out or come loose. And typically when you're cutting dados, your fence is slightly over the top of the throat plate anyway, or your sacrificial fence, whatever you're using with your dado blades. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would greatly appreciate it if you would consider doing so. And if you would like to get an amazing shirt like this, my store is right below this video, and there's also a link in the description that'll take you there. If you enjoyed yourself, click on the video or the playlist that's going to pop up next to me. Like I said in the beginning, in that playlist, you're going to find all my table saw tutorials. They're going to help you out in a big way. That's all we got for this time. And remember to always respect the power of your power tools. And we'll see you soon.